hello guys welcome back to my channel my name is nelo and you're watching nelo stitches today's tutorial is going to be on how to cut and sew this lovely wrapper skirt and a kimono blouse if you are new to my channel please hit on the subscribe button below and subscribe turn on the notification bell so as to be notified each time i upload new video like and share my video and i used four yards of silk material for this tutorial for this dress um, i mean the wrapper skirt and the blouse so here is my starting line i marked one inch and this point is my waistline 17 inches and here is the length of the blouse okay so we are going to start making and it's on fold is into four i folded this into four okay so we're going to start with the blouse then later on we're going to draft the wrapper so for the neck width i used three inch four inches wide and 3.5 inches deep okay so for the neck depth i use 3.5 you can use four inches this is because i'm not using a zipper for the back because we are drafting the back and the front together i'm not using any zipper for the back and i'm not also using a button i'm not opening any part of the neckline so that is why i made the neck width to be four inches and the neck depth 3.5 or four inches so i'm just going to connect with a curve this way you just curve it to meet the neck depth like this so guys this is a silk fabric and it's really difficult to work with so it's shifting so i'm taking my time to curve this so that you guys will see the marking And then for the sleeve, to mark your sleeve, your shoulder divide by 2 plus your sleeve length. So if your shoulder is 16, you divide that by 2, you have 8. And then you mark the length of the sleeve you want, where you want your sleeve to stop. Okay, if you want your sleeve to be 11 inches, that means after marking your 8 inches for half of your shoulder, you add the 11 inches length. So in my case, my shoulder is 18 um 16 divided by 2 will give me 8 okay and then to that 8 i'm going to add 10 inches extra for my sleeve length that means i'm marking 18 for my sleeve okay or another method is to measure from your center bone your center neck bone to where you want your sleeve to end whatever you get you mark it here as i am marking right now okay so if you are using a turn up sleeve you mark exactly the length of your sleeve plus half inch for sewing allowance if you are not using a turn up sleeve that means you need to add extra two inches for your folding allowance okay you add extra two inches to your sleeve length for folding allowance if you are using a turn up sleeve you add half inch for folding allowance so i am using a turn up sleeve so i added seam allowance for that okay Next, I'm going to slant my shoulder by two inches. I'll connect to this point. Okay, in case you don't understand what I said earlier, if you divide your shoulder measurement here across back, you divide it by two. In my case, my shoulder is 16. 16 divided by two will give me eight. And to that eight, I add extra 11 inches i think so i add extra 11 inches that means the length of my sleeve is 11 inches plus my shoulder that's 19 so i marked 19 as my shoulder and i add half inch for seam allowance or one inch for seam allowance making it 20 or 19 and a half and at that point i came down by two inches for my shoulder slant and right now i'm going to mark my sleeve opening so it depends on what you want if you want it wide to be open very wide you can use 11 inches or 10 inches in fact if you want exactly like the one the lady on the company wore you use 10 to 11 inches but in my case i'm going to do eight inches and then i'll add one inch for seam allowance so i'll be marking on nine okay so I'll be using 9 inches or you can measure your round sleeve divided by 2 plus seam allowance. Okay, you can measure your round sleeve divided by 2 plus seam allowance. But if you want it to be very free, open like the one the lady on the thumbnail is wearing, then you will use like 10 and then 
or 11 you add one inch for your seam allowance okay so in my case i'm using 8.5 Because my round sleeve is 15, 15 divided by 2 is 17 and a half. And to that I add, is 7 and a half, sorry. And to that I add 1 inch for sewing allowance. That's why it's 8.5, 8 and a half, okay. So now I'm going to mark my bust measurement divided by 2 here. On that line, I'm, I marked my bust circumference divided by 4 plus 2.5 inch. Bust circumference divided by 4 plus 2.5 inch, 1 inch for seam allowance, 1.5 inch for ease. You can use half um, 1 inch for ease. So mind you, if you're adding 1 inch for ease, you're automatically adding 4 inches to your measurement, extra 4 inches to your measurement. If you're adding 1.5, you're adding extra 6 inches or 5 inches to your measurement, okay? So I'm using 1.5 ease allowance plus one inch for sewing allowance so i did the same thing on the waistline waist divided by four plus 2.5 inch and at the hemline i marked my hip divide by four plus 2.5 inch also okay so after this i'm going to connect all this together So on this line here, I'm going to mark the same thing I marked on the shoulder. I will minus one inch from there. So if you mark 16 inches on your shoulder, you're going to mark 15 inches here. Okay, so you measure your shoulder. Anything you marked there, you're going to mark the same thing here. Okay, so I marked 20 inches and I will minus one inch from that from there and i will mark it here if you mark 19 inches you minus one inch from your 19 inches that means you're going to mark 18 inches there and you connect it this way slanted with a slant line this way okay so you minus one inch from what you mark on your shoulder and then you connect okay So I'm trying to highlight the line. So to cover your armhole, to cover your armhole, you need to come in by one inch. Okay. Or you can connect from your waistline up to the sleeve opening. You can connect from your waistline up to the sleeve opening. Or you can go down by five inches and connect and curve or you can go down by two inches just like i would do so from here i will mark one inch outward like this so you can also mark two inches outward if you want to really free or you can mark three inches outward that way depend on you what you want okay and then i'm going to connect come down by two inches here so you can go down by three five inches or you connect directly from that waistline to this point Okay, you can connect from the waistline to this point here, but I'm going to start from this 2.5, 2 inches I marked downward, and I'll connect this way, okay? Okay, and we are done. Right now, I'm going to cut this out. Okay, so next we are going to join this together right side facing the right side of each other okay so here is the right side of this and i'm going to place the right side of it facing each other right sides facing the right side of each other before then i'm going to turn the neckline with a bias tape 
okay so you can use the fabric and turn it you can cut a facing for this or you can use a, your fabric to create a bias so if this is your bias you place it right side facing the right side and sew around and then you flip it over to the wrong side and top stitch okay that is how to turn with your bias if you're using facing i'll show you how to cut your facing so you're going to place this right side facing the right side of each other this way okay and then you're going to sew join the two shoulders together with half an inch and i will do the same thing on this other side also turn the shoulder with half an inch okay and i'll be back so let's let's cut the wrapper okay so this is the wrapper i'll be working with the measurement for this wrapper is my hip circumference plus quarter of my hip circumference again so my hip circumference is 44 and i 44 divided by 4 is 11 so 44 plus 11 inches extra okay that makes it 55 right yeah 55 inches that's the width of my wrapper and then the length should be any length of your choice okay you can use any length of your choice for your length just take your measurements and use any length of your choice so but i just should tell you how to calculate the width of your wrapper so you fold into two like this you fold into like this in order to curve your skirt to give it that curvy shape or the curvy look it has okay so remember i said your hip circumference or your round hip whichever one you understand your round hip plus quarter of your hip if your round hip is is 40 40 divided by 4 is 10 so after 40 you add another extra 10 inches that will make it 50 so you'll be cutting 50 so from this point i went up by 15 inches you can go up by 15 inches or from your waistline from this your waistline you come down by 10 inches and start your curve from there but for me i went up by 15 inches because i don't want it to be too revealing okay and for this point i marked 10 inches you can use 15 or 10 depend on your choice okay so you're going to see the results on my body at the end of the video because my was not revealing anything so i'm going to connect with your curve up to this point okay so you can go up by 20 15 okay and then you connect so i'm trying to curve this you just take your time and curve it up to this point like I said, you can do more, you can go in more. So after you cut it, tie it around your body to see if it has the shape you like. If you don't like the shape, then you can do more. You can go deeper than my 10 inches. You can use 15, you can use 20. Okay, so this is the shape of what I wanted. I don't want it too curvy. Okay, I don't want it too curvy. Like I said, you can go higher okay okay let me say let me add extra five inch here so you can do higher then you curve this way you curve it up to the width you want okay so but for me this is what i want i don't want it to to be too revealing so like i said you can come down from your waistline by five to ten inches or you can start curving even from your waistline okay to the width you want okay you can start curving from the top down to the width you want your curve to be so after cutting please tie it around to see if it gives you the shape you want if not you recurve this okay you recurve it to your taste okay so next you can just go and fold your wrapper like this and sew it round or you use a bias tape so guys if you want to use a facing just place your fabric on top of another fabric make sure that the width is like four inches wide like this and then you trace out the neckline you turn it over and cut out the shape you want at the back cut out the shape you want make sure it's up to four inches wide okay make sure it's up to four inches okay so that is how you can trace your facing then you turn the neckline and then you flip it over 
and top stitch on the facing and then you flip it over like this okay so that is how to turn with facing if you want to but for me i use a bias tape okay so here is my the strap i want to use for my turn off sleeve so what you do is you measure your sleeve length from here you measure whatever you get that will be the length of your uh, strap this is 19 okay that will be the length this one i've not cut it out yet i've trimmed out the first one so i'm trying to show you guys how i what i did okay so what you do is you place it as you can see i use bias tape to turn my neckline okay so all you need to do is to open up your sleeve this way on the wrong side of your sleeve opening you're going to place your facing i mean your turn up strap this way and so up to this point and then you flip it over and top stitch on the fabric okay i'm going to repeat what i did in case i did not mention the width of this um turn up strap is five inches wide on fold is 2.5 okay so let me repeat what i did earlier you open it up the wrong side of your dress i mean blouse you sew you flip it this way and top stitch on the blouse and then you flip it over again so this is how it's going to stay on your sleeve opening so i've done that as you can see okay i stitch this way I flip it over like this and I top stitch on the main dress and I'm going to go iron it out okay top stitch and then I'll go and iron it like this so that it will lay in place as you can see the inside is neat and the outside is also neat so you just go and iron this out and after that you're going to fold this into two at the wrong side we're going to fold this right side facing each other so let me use my pin and secure it so that i'll explain how you're going to shape this blouse so the same thing i did on this sleeve i'm going to do on the other one so make sure this your turn up is inside you hold it this way i have excess here let me cut it out okay so push your turn up inside like this it was meant to be a turn up okay so you hold it this way and then you shape your blouse with the same allowance you added okay like i said i'll be using one inch for seam allowance here i'll be using one inch for my seam allowance here so you're going to start sewing from this sleeve point here from this point here you sew this way down to the hemline and then you fold the down part of your blouse and that is all for the blouse now for the wrapper so for the wrapper as you can see i used a bias tape to turn my wrapper around okay i use a bias tape to turn the wrapper all from this edge to this other end okay and for this trap you can just use any inches of your choice for this trap you just add it just look at the way i sold my strap so you just sew your strap to the two edge of the wrapper to enable you to tie your wrapper behind you to your back okay and that is all for this tutorial and this is the final result guys like i said if you want your cuff to be very pronounced you can still curve it more okay to be very obvious you can go higher than 15 inches and then you curve okay Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate and I will see you in our next tutorial. Bye.